Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome into the Graham Lick and Mac Lane podcast, episode 291. Mac, here is a mental note that I'm giving to both of us that we need to start planning what we're doing for episode 300. Because mm. we generally have not done, we did a big thing for 100. Yeah. I don't think we did a big thing for 200. 300 is a big deal. Yeah. We got to start thinking huge. about that. Think about this 365, a year worth of podcasts Whoa. is coming up. So we've got two kind of milestones creeping mm. up kind of fast. You could That'll listen probably to be an football episode season. every wow, day. That's crazy. That's crazy to think about. Yeah. That's, that's what we'll do with 365. <laughs> we'll say, you got to go listen to an episode every day. We're excited about this one. Our summer guest series continues to roll on. And I would like to say really quickly before we introduce Michael Alford, the athletic director at Florida State, who we're super excited to have on. I want to shout out my baby boy, Jacob, who (laughs) slept through this entire interview we did with with Michael. Look at that. And is still sleeping. Look at the little bean. Oh my gosh. I'm so proud of him. He's only (laughs) one month old and he figured out mom needed to go work. So I need to sleep, and uh, I'm just very proud. Speaking right. of that, Mac, your first Father's Day was yesterday. How did it go? Oh, my gosh. It was awesome. Um, so it's special, right? I, I was going to go into a whole long thing, but I'm not going to because we don't have a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's something, honestly, that I've looked forward to for a long time. And uh, you know, to, to finally have that, to have that little baby girl to spend all that time with her and, and – uh, you know, Khaki always says, man, she loves you so much. I love her Aww. so much. And, and to, to have that day and to have her and, and be with her, it's, it's special. And so shout out to all the dads out there. Um, you know, we, we have that role. We got to keep doing our job and growing these babies and getting them right. Um, but yeah, it, it was awesome, KG. It was a lot of fun. Getting them right. Exactly. Shout out to my husband, Nick, on his first Father's Day. I got him and Jacob matching swimsuits. So <laughs> they are going to look great as we go to the beach next month. But One thing to remember, friends, and I know we just had Father's Day, so maybe this is a mental note that you can jot down for next year. Ingalls has everything you need for Father's Day. They've got all the meat you can imagine if if the father in your life is similar to Mac in that they love anything that is made on the grill. You can go get stuff over there. And also, if you're a father and you're in a pinch... They have a really mm-hmm. solid baby aisle at Ingles. That's They've right. got everything you could need. They've got uh, diapers. We know, Mac. I mean, I, did, I didn't even comprehend the amount of diapers. <laughs> how many, hey, real quick, how many diapers need... are you going through a day right now? Look, I don't want to expose my son's um, <laughs> habits here as a, young, as a young little child, but dude can uh, go through some milk. I'll put it that way. So we have been using quite a few diapers. And so we need that baby island angles. They've got wipes. They've got formula if you need that. They've got everything there, Mac. And so just for any dads out there, if That's you're, right. they could save you at some point, that baby island angles. You, you know that one commercial where the dad like forgets the binky and yes. he has to drive all the way home? You yes. should have just went to Ingles, bro. Yes. They got your binkies right there. The baby would never know. Uh, before <laughs> we tell you a message about our friends, let me introduce our guests today. Uh, Michael Alford. FSU AD, just a guy that I really admire. And, and mm-hmm. you know, to see the way that he's done it, um, it, it's impressive, KG. The background that he has, the, the extensive just relationships that he's been able to build and, and ways that he's done it. You know, it, it's so interesting. We talk about this, but the avenue of AD has changed so much. It, it's not just your retired football coach, basketball coach, baseball, whatever. It's a businessman. It's a guy that has, and women, that, that you have to know, you have to understand the model, you have to understand the business, how to fundraise, how to gain money, all these different things on top of being a great leader, being a lawyer type guy, being able to relate to coaches, players, lead this athletic department as, as so. And man, he just really exemplifies that. He, he, he's had stops at Oklahoma, Alabama, kind of on the fundraising side and in the multimedia right side. He's with the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. We talk about the best of the best in the NFL, making the most money and the things that they're able to do was an athletic director before he got here. Then, you know, kind of in 2020, he becomes the, the, the CEO of the booster club. And then the next year or so they say, Hey, we need you to come lead this ship. Take over? And he's been able yeah. to do it and, and hasn't looked back since. I mean, the things that Florida state is doing, uh, we, we jump into all this, not just football, but every sport in KG. I know you're very complimentary of that. Uh, they're killing it. Michael's killing it. And this conversation was so much fun. So a quick word from Ingles, and then we'll get to the interview. 
It's time to discover the convenience and time savings of contact-free pickup with Ingalls Curbside. Just visit shop.ingalls-markets.com or download the app. And your Ingalls personal shopper gets to work with specialized training on how to select the freshest items for a pre-scheduled pickup. They'll even text you with updates. You pull up to a designated space and your personal shopper delivers your items right to your vehicle. Fresh, fast, and affordable. It's all in the bag. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. Michael, welcome into the show today. We're, we're taking a little bit of a pause here in, in kind of our you know big media summer guest tour because there's a lot going on in college athletics and, and we wanted to talk, you know, to an athletic director and thought who better, you know, than our friends down at Florida state, just to hear your point of view about a couple of different things. And, you know, really just kind of a state of the union of Florida state and, and where you guys are. So welcome into the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, Eric Kelly, I appreciate the opportunity. You guys do such a good job of not only promoting all the schools in the ACC and what we represent, but just, you know, y'all's knowledge of collegiate athletics all, all together. Well, and I appreciate, I appreciate that. you carrying that banner. No doubt. No doubt. It's easy to do when, when you're in a great conference like this, great people and, and great teams, man. So we, again, appreciate your time. Uh, I, I really wanted to start with kind of just talking about you and, and you know, your upbringing and, and getting into this whole thing, because you know, as I said, right before we started recording here, uh, you've got a little different route than I would say most college administrators because you're, you're the money guy. You know, you're the guy that has fundraised and sold and, and done all these different things. But ultimately, at the end of the day, you have great vision and great leadership. And I think that's kind of how you got to where you are and great passion, of course, about student athletes and, and athletics in general. How were you able to translate multimedia sales, corporate sponsorships, and, and get into the athletic department? And, and is that something that you always saw that career path ending up into? Well, it, it's, and I do have an interesting background uh, on the pro sp side of sports and collegiate side of sports, but I grew up son of a college football coach. And uh, so understand what it is to live in a household and the pressures that go along with that. And then being a division one athlete myself, uh, being very fortunate and blessed to have that opportunity and being able to play and get a feel for it. And then, and then marrying a division one athlete um, who played volleyball, at the university of Hawaii. And then she, Laura was also a division one head coach. So I saw it from the spouse side and, and got to know it. And then I have three division one daughters who play uh, sports. So I see it as a father. Um, so I bring a lot of that passion of kind of growing up around this industry my entire life and and really helps guide my decision making. Um, I, I look at how what's the impact it would have if that was my daughter? What's the impact if that was my son? And really try to develop authentic relationships with our student athletes and be there for them because I do think I understand what they go through and same with coaches understand what the, what the coach is going through because I've seen it from the side of a spouse I've seen it from a side of a, of a son and and seeing the grind that my father would go through and then I've seen it also as side of an athlete yeah. and understanding what a coach goes through sure. and so it's really bringing all those different experiences um, to the athletic department and the athletic department culture and, and really just trying trying to be authentic. Now on the revenue side, then it's using my experiences, whether it's the NFL, uh, Major League Baseball, ESPN, um, and some of the projects I've had, it really looking at different revenue streams and trying to make sure that we're putting the right revenue streams in place to fund our facilities, to fund our student athlete experience, to fund what we're doing academically at the highest level. And that's something I'm really proud about Florida State, Kevin Eric, is that we fund our sports to compete for championships across the board. We we haven't tiered our sports and said, okay, we're, we're going to compete for championships with these five, but these five, we just want to compete. Um, we're funded tops in the conference across the board and, and top 20 nationally um, across the board. So we expect championships and want to compete at a high level. And if you don't have those different revenue streams coming in, uh, you're not able to fund them. And, and that's our that's our goal. 
Yeah, no, no doubt about that. And and KG in a second is going to kind of talk about those avenues and, and how you guys have made those decisions. And we're also going to talk about where, where that comes from. Uh, but I did want to hit really quick because you, you have been such an impressive businessman. You have all these great, you know, examples and, and time that you've put in at a lot of different places. So kind of big picture from an athletic department standpoint, when did that shift occur it kind of in your opinion or, or factually history if you've seen it of it's not just the retired football coach it's not just the retired right. basketball coach it's a businessman who has to be the athletic director to kind of guide that ship in the right direction well when, when you when you see the dollars have gotten as large as they have uh whether it's employment retainment um of talent acquisition when you're looking at the media contracts when you're looking at thing, trademarks and licensing, what we're able to do there, uh, when you're looking at your multimedia rights agreements, I mean, the role of an athletic director is, is so vast <laughs> and the different areas and you were talking revenue, but then you also got to, you know, you got to be a lawyer basically and have legal counsel very close to you with everything that's going on in collegiate athletics today. You know, my biggest risk personally that I that keeps me up at night is our medical and our academics and the re the educational reputation of the university. You know, those are two very at risks and compliance. There are really three at risks that I have to be on top of every day um, on top of looking at the business side of things and the revenue. So I think the shift came when when you saw the growth and the interest into collegiate athletics and having to make these decisions especially like florida state we're self-sustaining so you know, whatever we do our budget is dependent on what we're able to go out and bring in to help support the student athlete experience so i think the shift started really about a while ago uh, but you're seeing it more and more uh, evidence now of a, a different type of athletic director that's coming in to run these organizations. Yeah, it makes sense. And, you know, as the money has gotten bigger, you need someone that is a little more qualified in that regard. And I will add this with Florida State, I've always respected how Florida State is good at pretty much every women's sport. I mean, I, I love that about Florida State. And so all of that comes from the investment that Florida State has generally put in to women's athletics. And so for you, Michael, when you were, as you've alluded to, I mean, you are kind of downplaying it. You have been all over uh, athletics. You worked for the Cowboys, Oklahoma, you were the athletic director at Central Michigan, and then a bunch of different other stops as well. What was it about Florida State that intrigued you? And when you got there, what did you feel like was the first thing that needed to be done? You know, Kelly, it's funny. I grew up, uh, I grew up in Memphis. My dad was at Memphis State at the time, and I was the biggest diehard Florida State baseball fan because that was the old Metro Conference. So they oh, were, that's right. Yeah, they, they were in the old Metro and they would come to Memphis and I never missed. It. And I'll never forget my dad sitting there or watching them. I'm in seventh grade, I think, at the time. My dad goes, see those guys? They fly. They don't bus. <laughs> I was like, I want to play there. Uh, but I, I grew up in 86 watching the College World Series run they did then. And, and Richie Lewis, I mean, just Eduardo. And I played against him. And when we in youth baseball and it just became a Florida State fan, but 11, we, I'm old, uh, Eric and Kelly. We didn't have internet and cell phones. Uh, so I came out of high school out of Lafayette, Louisiana. And uh, who recruited me? I was a football baseball guy and had offers of both and chose just to play baseball mm -hmm. at, at the next level. And, um, so the, I was always followed Florida State because the tradition, the passion, the location, the the history, what Coach Bowden stood for, yeah. and following that with the old Metro Conference when when they were an independent and all those teams. If you go to the old Metro, I mean, it would have been one heck of a league. It was South Carolina, Virginia Tech, Florida State, Memphis, Louisville, Cincinnati. I mean, it would have been yeah. A, football conference <laughs> um but you know so following florida state and just knowing what coach bowden stood for and i've always been a fan of that and um, have always just wanted to be here and just mm -hmm. had the opportunity
opportunity and knew it was, you know, you have your bucket list of jobs, you, 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 um, you want to go uh, and have the opportunity to, to work at, and this was one of them. And I was very fortunate. And so when you did get that job, what was number one on your list, if you will? <laughs> get at, well, I, I was fortunate that I came early and got to know the people as CEO mm -hmm. of the Seminole Boosters. And, and that really helped. But then my really when I became AD was really getting to know the student athletes at a different level and building that rapport and relationships with them. Because um, I think uh, Ben and Eric and Kelly, y'all know this is the most impressionable times, mm -hmm. in my opinion, of someone's life. It's kind of when they form their opinions. That's why I got back into college athletics. I was very happy with the Dallas Cowboys and Jason Witten was at practice the other day. And I told him I always use him as the example when I'm speaking. Because when I woke up in the morning with the Cowboys, I wasn't making a difference in Jason Witten's life. He, he was doing okay. Um, but, you know, being able to have an influence and be there for these young men and women during this time and then making sure you, one, provide them the resources to be successful, whether that's in their sport, whether that's in the classroom, or tutoring and everything we provide them whether it's just being there to make sure they have the best medical treatment, um, just being there for them. My wife, Laura, brings me cookies. It's become a thing here at Florida State. Uh, Mac Leonard the other day was when they were in the softball regional just turned to me and goes, is, is Miss Laura bringing cookies for the locker room tomorrow? I'm like, I'll go home, put the order in, Mac. But it's just having that impact and making sure that we surround them, not only administratively, but coaches of people of high character that are going to have this lasting impact on them. I still have, uh, I talk to my college coach once a month, uh, probably, and Coach Polk at Mississippi State, and he's had such an impact on my life. So it's making sure that, that we're there for them and that we kind of are there to guide them during these impressionable years. Man, how powerful is that? I mean, it's college athletics, you know, wrapped yes. up in, in, in kind of a, a bow there. It's why we love it, you know, the three of us, you know, so much. And obviously we're, we're at a different, you know, kind of vantage point and cover it differently, but we're, we're still involved and, and still love that for all the reasons that you just pointed out. Kind of the, the, the last point that you brought up there with, with coaches and, you know, high character people and, and just passionate about their sport, but also you know, they're student athletes that they're in charge of. And man, Coach Norvell ha has just done such an amazing job at Florida State in such a quick, you know, amount of time. And, and it didn't start off that way. There, there was a little bit of rockiness that, you know, he had to go through. But I think what was so important was that Florida State, as, as an administrative, you know, kind of point of view, they gave him time. Why, why is that so important to allow these coaches to, to have that time, whatever it is necessary, to put in their culture, put, to put in their system, their beliefs, to now where you're seeing this machine that is just cranked up? Well, you know, we kind of got here at the same time, uh, Coach and I did. And being able to call it behind the curtain, uh, being able to see what he was doing, the culture he was building, um, and really the type of individual he was bringing in to be associated with the program, whether that's the coaching staff he was formulating, the type of high character man they are and what they believed in, everything down to the players, to the nutrition. I mean, there, there, was a, there was a game plan. And being able to work with him through it and understand what the process was going to be to turn the program around. And then seeing the results of the young men and the high character people that were associated with the program, you knew it was going to lead to success. I'm a firm believer it all starts with culture. Uh, I love the book, Good to Great, <laughs> because it, your culture is going to build everything that you're doing, and it will result, result in, in good success for you. And to see what he was putting in place, I knew and we knew uh, success was coming because these young men are, are doing it the right way and putting their priorities in order of, of sustainable success. And we talk about that all the time. You can, you can be a flash in the pan, but if you have the right culture, Lonnie's a great example of this. Mm -hmm. If you have a great culture of what you're building, 
you're going to have sustained success. And that's what you're looking for. We probably could have done so. He probably could have taken some shortcuts and had success a little sooner, but we want the sustained success. And that's what Florida State represents with Coach Bowden and that success we had, the most historic run probably ever in college football. And we want to get back to that. And we think we, for sure, with this culture, are heading in the right direction. Well, speaking of sustained success, now we look at the upcoming college football season and Mac and I talk about it basically with every guest because it just comes up because the FSU <laughs> hype train has left the station and it is going 100 miles an hour. How do you take advantage of that as an athletic department? How does Coach Norvell take advantage of that? But also realize that, yes, you want the hype because you're returning all these guys and Jared Verse comes back and all that and all that stuff. but you still got to go, you know, play LSU and prove it. So how do you balance that from an athletic department position as a whole? Well, it's, it's, it's being prepared. And one thing when I became and Kelly, yes, the question, one of the thing, first things I did was getting to know the student athletes, but also internally started putting in processes and procedures uh, to make sure you're prepared. You talk about any great business and you're going to put in processes and procedures. So when success comes, you're hitting on all cylinders. And that was really one of the first steps I did was start some restructuring, working with the boosters, working with our marketing, just making sure our ticket off is how we go about our business operations, making sure that when success comes, that you're prepared, you're prepared to capitalize on it. And th that was something we've been working on. Uh, we've had a, a top fundraising year the last two years have been the top we've ever had. Um, we got some facility projects. You're probably going to ask me about that later on. The fundraising going on with that has been very successful. But in order to capitalize on the momentum that you're talking about across all of our sports is making sure we have a plan and making sure that we're prepared internally to have those conversations and to showcase our student athletes. No matter how much success, I tell the story all the time, we got 600 great stories on this campus of these young men and women that are associated with our programs. We need to go out and show them and really show what they're about, their, their journey to where they are, and ask our partners just to partner with us to help us uh, make an impact on these young men and women's lives. And that's just having a plan and going out and executing it, just like yeah. a game plan in any year. That's sport. right. That's right. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. I think that's very important and very wise, you know, what you just said right there, because it's only a matter of time. And when that happens, how have we prepared, you know, kind of and, and can really reap in, you know, all that fruit and, and that great harvest. So you brought it up. Uh, I, I was going to mention it a little bit later, but I, let's talk about it now, because it was very interesting when, you know, we got a visit with you guys last year. The huddle was down there. We're doing our summer tour. And I see this beautiful weight room with this awesome equipment, all this stuff. And I'm talking with the coaches. They're like, oh. Yeah, this is just temporary. You know, we'll be here for a year or so, and then we'll move in to the next place. And I was like, what? What's going on? So, you know, it, it, what's interesting is there was a time not too long ago, actually, where Florida State would not spend money. And, and it was kind of this, I, I don't want to call it complacency, but that kind of was what it was. We won with less. Why do we need to spend more? And I think folks uh, like yourself and other administrators have really came in and said, no, we have to keep getting better. Even when we're at our best, we have to keep getting better and keep investing. So now we're seeing this amazing facility, great weight rooms, football only, all these different things. So I guess why is that important? And then just lay out the project for us, what we've got going on. Yeah, it is so important. because, And I go back to the student athlete experience. Um, for us to be able to provide them the greatest experience, they need the best facilities. Uh, and that's that's our job. Um, but, you know, not the Monday morning quarterback, Eric, but, you know, when I first showed up to Florida State three years ago, I was kind of taken back by by the facilities um, and just the knowing coming from Oklahoma. And it's a funny story. We toured Oklahoma's football building that I did when I was there seven years ago and raised the money for design and did that. There, I was with Joe and they're building another one already. 
<laughs> I'm just like we hey, just Thad Turnip scene. Of course, and, and, and Thad, I was with Thad. They're down here friend. They're redoing it. They're redoing yep. it. <laughs> I was with him at, at Alabama. That's right. Thad and I go very when he he and I were touring it yesterday and and wow. talking about it and showing me what he was going to do with the new one. But you know, it's so important that we have the very best, and that we at the end of the day, as I tell our donors, I tell our staff, we're Florida State University. And there's an expectation and a standard that comes with being Florida State University with being a Seminole. And that's the expectation is to be the very best and the standard is to have the best. Um, so going out and addressing that, we addressed the locker room and football that hadn't been done. Uh, we did the weight room, which hadn't been updated in over 15 years. And, and built that new weight room. We broke ground on the 150,000 square foot football facility. We went to softball, added additional seating, did a premium seating area in softball that sold out in two seconds. And we even got, we're expanding on that. Um, we got plans for baseball. We did some, some cosmetic things in baseball, but now we're going in and looking at seating. Um, I was on a phone this morning with Beach Volleyball, uh, looking at building a brand new building, a brand new facility there. I think it's going to happen real soon. Um, so constantly looking at how do we get better and invest in the student athletes. And facilities play a major, major part of that. One of the first things I addressed when I got here is nutrition. We got our new nutritionist and went out and I didn't like what we were our training table for our mm. student athletes. So went out and partnered with the very best who does the training table for the Cowboys, the Saints, the Bucks, the Yankees, Real Madrid, and Man U, and the Florida State Seminoles, where mm -hmm. they're only a collegiate client. Um, but I want our student athletes to have the very best. So it's really just going out, having a vision, putting the processes in place, but then making sure that what we build impacts them and their daily life and that they're able to capitalize on it and help them achieve their goals and dreams uh, of being where they're here at Florida State. Well, Michael, you're currently speaking our language. As former student athletes, we all know training table is the most important thing. Uh, it's at least <laughs> yeah. top three. Hey, I went to school in Mississippi. I went to school in Mississippi. We just had fried catfish. Yeah. <laughs> Look, <laughs> times have changed because even Mac and I are not that old, but 10, 15 years ago, there were a lot of things they couldn't give us. I remember we had to have a collective jar of peanut butter in our locker room because they couldn't give us peanut butter. We couldn't have they a could bagel give us bagels. And peanut butter. It was yeah. unbelievable. But, but you can't spread it on there. Right. That's it right. Is, you can't, that's illegal. So Unreal. Dumb. So I'm so, so glad that's changed in these current student athletes because we know how important nutrition is. And those yes. founding and those building blocks of how you eat in college can you know, continue on for the rest of your life. But anyway, let's get off the food, even though we all know it's the most important part. <laughs> When we look at college athletics as a whole, this I am so intrigued with your perspective on this because we're seeing, as some people want to say, you know, the Big Ten and the SEC, they're expanding, they're taking over. And, you know, wh where does that leave the ACC? And that's a, that's a big question for a lot of people that listen to our podcast. Where, where do you think that leaves the ACC? And, and what does the ACC need to do as we see college athletics move towards this more uncertain future? Well, I can tell you, I have 100% confidence in, in Commissioner Phillips. Um, he is definitely the right guy to lead us through this, call it transition phase of collegiate sure. athletics. He's doing uh, just marvelous of trying to position the ACC to, to try new things. With the, yeah. I mean, look at the revenue discussions we're having. Um, no other conference is really talking about that right now. But it's something we need to do because of the media contracts and, and falling behind a little bit just because of people are able to go to market again before right. we're able to go to market. Um, so it's looking at it holistically, and I think he's doing a marvelous job of, of coming up with some solutions. Uh, do they solve the entire problem? No, but they are providing some steps and solutions to help narrow that revenue gap a little bit. But we still, as a conference, need to continue to look of how we narrow that gap, how are we innovative, how are we creative um, ahead of other peer conferences. 
and get ahead of of this collegiate new landscape. And mm -hmm. it really is about just working together and trying to come up with a solution. You know, we have some major brands in our conference. Uh, and what are we doing to to make sure that those brands stay at the, at the top of the level mm -hmm. uh, they are as a conference? And that's just some of the discussions we're having. And he's doing a marvelous job. Um, you know, I got to continue to push because I, I, I'm at Florida State and I represent Florida sure. State. Sure. Make sure we have our best interest in alignment mm -hmm. with what the conference is doing. And, of course. And, so it's 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 a work in progress, Kelly, and um, but I have one hundred percent faith in, in Jim uh, to lead us through this transition. Now, there's there's no doubt that it, it, it's going to be a man, just an interesting thing. You know, five ten years, what does this whole landscape you know look like? I mean, you're, you're mentioning the Metro Conference, so all, all this <laughs> you know the, the the realignment and changing it's nothing new. Um, yeah, we're I'm just, just glad you. I'm just glad you and Kelly knew what the Metro Conference that's right. was. Yes, that's, right. that's right. That's the right. Did not I, have to Google it. I did what not I knew it Google. was was the conference Florida State was in before they came into the ACC <laughs> that's right. that's and right. started dominating. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, and, and so it's it's nothing new, but we we always make stuff such a big deal, you know, just as media and social media continue to grow, you know, it, it's just talking points for everybody, but th th it's nothing that college has not seen before. College athletics has not seen right. before, but I do kind of want just your, your personal opinion. I know you said, you know, the best interest of Florida state and, and this and that, but as a former D one athlete and, and a football fan, I think we all are at the end of the day, is this realignment expansion thing good for college athletics, good for college football, or do, do you want to see it maybe slow down a little bit? Well, being a traditionalist, uh, you, you know, I struggle with it um, to see where it's heading and, and to see the, the separation gap and, and really the revenue separation gap. Yeah. And, you know, you look at what's going on in NIL, you look at facilities, you you look at the race that's going on. You know, it's, it's one of those things I sit back and go, is it right or wrong? I, I It's not my to say. Uh, may not agree with it, but it's reality. Um, so, it, you know, it's it's something you just got to monitor. You got to stay with. Mm -hmm. And I got to make sure what I'm doing uh, in working with our administration on campus is I'm positioning Florida State to wherever the collegiate landscape escape goes that's right. in the best possible, best possible light. And that's looking at our facilities, looking at what we're doing student athletes, looking at how we invest in making sure that our brand is still recognizable nationally, globally. Yeah. And what are we doing marketing wise to make sure that we get our message out to, to who the Seminoles are and what we stand for. You know, there's not many institutions that, and I tell our, our players, our student athletes this, that you can graduate from a top 20 public institution uh, and have that meaningful degree in the left hand and be able to compete for championships and have those rings on your right hand across the board in all sports. So that that's kind of our call. We want a degree on the left and championship rings on the right when you walk off campus uh, because we are here to set you up and to have that meaningful impact to go be great contributors to society. And that's what the student athlete experience is about. We should never lose that as we look at the changing landscape of collegiate athletics, but we also have to be knowledgeable that it is changing and that we need to prepare ourselves for whatever opportunity comes. Right. I think, you know, the ACC and a lot of the member institutions understand there needs to be some sort of adapting to what's going on. But I want to point out you're in Oklahoma City. You're there uh, right now as we're recording this because the Florida State softball team is in the College World Series yet again. And that's something that I really admire about Commissioner Phillips. And I'm a big fan of his as well, that women's athletics are still at the top of his mind. And we've talked about Florida State and how they're good at literally every women's sport. I mean, that's always been a thing that Florida State has prided itself on. So that's something that worries me a little bit, Michael, I'll be honest. And it worries Mac because he has an eight-month-old daughter who's going to be a hooper. Yeah. So he understands this. How do we, and from what you've heard in different meetings you've been in and just being at the forefront of what we're doing, how do we maintain and be able to fund women's athletics well, also, I understand, I get it. Football funds almost everything. And I love college football and that's where the money is. How do we balance it? And the answer might not be, we're not sure yet, but where do you see that going? And it's something that 
that, as I said at the beginning, the uh, student athlete experience and having three daughters, fortunate, yep. all girls club, uh, <laughs> and, and seeing what impact collegiate athlete experience had on them. Right. Got one who's very successful working in the NFL. Um, this, she's really proud of her. I have one that just graduated um, from Central Michigan. I got one that was a freshman playing last year. Mm -hmm. And just to see the impact, the coaches, the experience, the travel, the food, everything we took advantage of when we were student athletes that helped shape our lives to where we are today to make sure we keep that. And that's my daily thought process. And how do I make sure that we keep the student athlete experience relevant and that we do have that impact? I was having the conversation last night with one of our donors here, which made a nice contribution. So it was it was great. Shout going out to, on the pod. Like, so <laughs> shout right. out on, on that. But you know, it was talking about our our softball team and what Lonnie does and the impact that she has on these young women's lives, but then also looking at the way we treat them with nutrition, as we talked about and how we've upgraded that and, and the travel and the, the, we're staying at the nice hotel, the Skirvin here in Oklahoma City, one of the nicest, and just the experience they have and being able to provide that to them is what keeps me up because if we ever separate that, um, you, you're right, Kelly, uh, the, you know, financial side, there's only one sport that really drives uh, the revenue and, but in it, and it has a trickle down effect uh, being able to fund these other programs. But at least here at Florida State, we're always going to fund our programs as highest levels we can fund them and make sure that student athlete experience is there. And especially in our women's sports, mm -hmm. because, it is so important to, to Florida State yeah. uh, that we, we have a broad-based approach uh, to our athletic programs. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, you know, I know Kelly and, and Michael, you both said it a hundred times, but that's not just talk. Like, folks, go look at the records. Go look at the championships. Go look They're at what's at going everything. on. That's go what, look at the facilities. That's the facilities that's right. we provide that's right. on uh, <laughs> everything that we're doing for our yeah. women's sports um, and the high-character coaches. That, sure. that we go out and make sure that we have um, leading those programs. They're just such yeah. great leaders and have such right. an impact, which is very important. No, no, no doubt about it. Um, I did want to circle back on one thing, just with the changing of athletics. And, you know, when you look at the transfer portal, you look at NIL, you look at realignment, TV contracts, playoff expansion, all these different things that, man, six years ago didn't exist, you know, for, for, a, for an athletic director to have to worry about. So it's almost like, Hey, Hey, Michael, here's a whole new job, put it on top of right. what you have to figure out. So of kind of those things, and maybe there's something up, maybe you blindside me here. <laughs> what, what gets the, your most attention or, or what is something that maybe you just think about it always, you got to carve out time for it every day. It feels like of kind of, uh, you know, those options there. Yeah. Uh, you hit all of them. <laughs> Gee, honestly, yeah. but you know it, it really some of the big things right now are, is the conference realignment and i go back to making sure that you got to take care of your internal processes first and that was one thing when i first became athletic director when all of this, some of this discussions was going on it was well we got to make sure we put ourselves in the best light facility wise because if we don't have the best facilities and and you know, we got to make sure no matter what happens, that Florida State is the brand is still the brand uh, of what it used to be. And we got to keep growing that. Um, but then you look and something that's really as close as the tampering, the transfer portal, everything going on in the industry right now. Um, you know, and I was fortunate enough to, to be co-chair of lead one in the NIL committee back in 2019 that we put together and we go to the NCAA in January of 20 and provided a system of guardrails, a third party administrator, uh, agents being registered. And, and now what do you hear? Hey, we need guardrails. We yeah. need party administrator. We need agents being, we told you what was going to happen in 20. Uh, if we didn't put guardrails and put some of these processes in place and now you look at it now we're like now we need these things well the genie's out of the bottle 
Um, so I'll spend a lot of time right now. I'm fortunate to still be working on that. Uh, and really, the Congress is leading by Florida with Gus Bilirakis and the Commerce Committee. And we're the only school to have Kaylee Mudge softball mm -hmm. to go to present uh, up and be asked to go to present in D.C. about the impact of NIL and how it's impacting her and how she's doing it the right way. Um, and just keep leading that charge because Kelly, I go back, it is important that we that we continue to try to solve this because yeah. it is gonna have such an impact on the Kaylee Mudges, on the Michaela Evan Fields, on these young athletes that maybe aren't playing football, um, the, that we can still have that experience for them and NIL being important. And we just need to get it right and, and make sure we're doing it the right way. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we all on this call, on this um, podcast, agree that NIL, it can and should be a positive, but it's just a matter oh. of figuring out how. And none of us are against students profiting off an image, nope. image likeness. I mean, that probably should have been happening a long time ago. 100% in favor. I wish they had it when I played. Right, yeah. exactly. That's right. Eric, I know Eric wishes they Think had Think of the money Eric McLean <laughs> could have oh, made. He, had, he would have had that best uh, pizza deal in, in Oh, Clemson. yeah, That's the beer right. products. I mean, <laughs> the opportunities are endless there. But I want to I want to end on, a, at least for me, kind of a positive note here. We all know the impact of college athletics and the impact that it's had on our lives. And I still think the future of college athletics can be very positive and hopefully can continue to impact generations to come. Do you agree with me on that, Michael? Like, do you, th the people that say college athletics is dead, college football is dead, whatever the second NIL happened. I, I just, I don't agree with that. What, what are your thoughts when people say that? Uh, I'm in total agreement with you, Kelly. You know, at the end of the day, we're here to support the educational mission of, of any university you're, you're, you're with and to make sure that we are, investing in these young men and women. I mean, you're 17, 22. This is, like I said earlier, I think the three of us can say this is when we had the most impact of who we were going to be later in life. And the people around us had that impact on us. So I, I believe that to the core value um, that we're still having that impact on these young men and women. We're still positioning them to to get a great education from a, like I said, a top 20 public institution in America and give them the opportunity to have friends and, and really form their opinions and philosophies and on life and how they're going to go out by what we surround them with to go be great contributors to not only their hometowns or society or wherever they end up, but compete and be great people that you would want to employ. Yeah. And that's our job because we are teaching them those core values while they're here. And I don't think that's ever going to go away. Uh, I think now it may change. And I, once again, we're all for the NIL. I think it's great. They should profit from it, but never lose the fact that the educational mission of the university is why you're at a university. Right. No doubt. We'll check every one of those boxes, man. Every single student athlete Kelly and I, you know, have interacted with from FSU. Mm -hmm. they, they exemplify all of that. And, and you guys are doing an unbelievable job. We cannot wait. I can't stress that enough. We cannot wait uh, to see what these Seminoles can do. We think it's going to be a massive year uh, and just really grateful for your time and insight. This was great. This was a lot of fun. No, I appreciate you too. Well, like I said at the beginning, I uh, appreciate how y'all represent and promote the conference and all the, schools within the conference and uh you know the acc is a special place and uh we're looking forward to this coming up football season thanks again to michael alfred for joining us the florida state athletic director this was a fun conversation to learn and really pick his brain mac i think as nerds as college athletics nerds that we are just to pick his brain <laughs> i very much enjoyed that and as we just talked to the fsu ad we have another special guest coming on next week matt give the listeners a little teaser that, that's right and, and you know the, the reason we want to do this i kind of called it a break but it really isn't i mean we're kind of interviewing them and, and seeing you know kind of how they got to where they are things of that nature but it was kind of a a little 
in between uh, of kind of this this series that we've been doing just to get some perspective on this changing environment and, and so you know we're going with with two of the big dogs in, in the mm-hmm. league with fsu just got that done and now we're going to go down to clemson and, and talk with graham neff and, and see kind of the clemson perspective on a lot of these different things and how clemson was on the forefront on a lot of this stuff especially in the acc when it comes to building and facilities and and social media and now the nil stuff and, and what they're all doing so will be very fun to kind of, we just spoke with Michael, now to hear from Graham what's different, what's the same, mm. how are they able to, to sustain and you know kind of keep building each individual brand to the highest that they absolutely can. So that will be a ton of fun, cannot wait. But huge shout out to, again, our friend Michael at FSU. This was such a fun episode. And shout out to our partner over at Ingalls for making all this possible, the great things that they do for us. So, guys, that's it. Another great episode. Graham Lick and Mac Lane, appreciate you joining and tuning in. We need you guys to go over and subscribe on YouTube. If you're not here already watching us, it's way more fun to see the faces, <laughs> to see the interactions, uh, you know, that we have with these great guests. And of course the OGs over on Apple podcasts, rate review, subscribe there as well. We would greatly appreciate that. But until next time, we'll see y'all.